Hi guys, uh, greetings of the day. Please welcome back to my YouTube channel where you can learn a subject called as engineering graphics. Now in this session, I'm going to have a discussion on how to solve a problem of pentagonism, manual sketching using the system approach. Now, the pentagon is uh, having a base. That's why we call this prism as a pentagonal prism. Now an example problem is like this. A pentagonal prism, 25 mm size of base and 60 mm axis length rests on HP on one of its edges of the base, which is inclined to VP at 30 degree. Draw the projections of the prism and the axis is inclined to HP at 40 degree. So according to the given question, the side edge, the edge here to here, these two distances 25 millimeter and the total size of the pentagon is 25 millimeter each edge. Okay, now we have to make sure that when you are going to rotate in the clockwise direction, it is going to rest on one of its edges on the HP. Now to hedge on the HP in the clockwise direction, how to do the initial position? Now let me show you. Now let me take an approximate point like this. Now somewhere over here, I'm going to draw a perpendicular line which is starting from the X value. And afterwards, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this point as a reference point. Now on this point, one has to keep a protractor and make sure that you are going to measure an angle of 72 degree. Now, one has to draw a 72 degree line here and afterwards, using your HP pencils, make sure that you are going to measure two hand off boxes over here to get the another point because the side length is 25 millimeter. And afterwards, again using your two H pencils and keeping the protractor at new position, that is from here, one has to draw a line at an angle of 72 degree once again. Now, what is that 72 degree? Now, let me show you. 72 degrees with respect to the vertical line, and here also 72 degrees with respect to the vertical line. And after doing that one, we need to get the side lens as 25 millimeter over here. And how to get that side lens? Make use of the compass and taking the compass as a reference, and this point as the center. And this point is going to be the radius that is the side length is supposed to be considered and then considering that side length i'm going to draw an arc over here like this now in the same fashion without changing the side length again we are going to draw one more arc over here without changing the side length okay once we have constructed now one can see that these lengths are going to be 24 that is another end point of the edges another end point of the edges now to get the remaining two edges what is the procedure we have to follow without changing the radius once again keep the compass center at the new positions what we got and then draw an arc like this then similarly the another new point what we have get earlier using that one and the radius as the same 25 without any changes one has to draw an arc like this now with the help of a scale and a pencil now one can complete the construction of a pentagon like this now the edges of the pentagon what we are going to draw is supposed to be a dark lines because it is a prism henceforth the base edges of the pentagon whatever we have written it should be rewritten as a dark line like this then identify the midpoint of the line identify the midpoint of a line then after identifying the midpoint of a line, what we have to do? We have to construct a perpendicular bisector. Now I have constructed one such perpendicular bisector. Again, to identify the midpoint, one can follow the bisection method. What is bisection method? Taking the radius value greater than half. Now, let me take a compass. Now, setting the radius value greater than half. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this reference. And from here to here, I'm going to generate one common arc. Now, let me repeat it. Taking uh, the different uh, value of a radius that is greater than half. Now, greater than half, I'm going to take it. Then I'm going to draw an arc like this. And in the same fashion, taking the value greater than half, then I'm going to draw an arc. Now, again, I'm going to draw an arc on the other side also. The moment I'm going to draw these arcs and then if I'm going to join these two lines and after joining these two lines that is from this intersection 
that is sorry not the end point from this intersection let me repeat from the okay it is getting as end point now let me print it out now in your booklet you don't have any issues you can easily uh, get the points now from that end point to this end point i'm going to connect it and it is going to be extended here now you can see this line whatever i have written this is going to be the required perpendicular bisector then let me delete these arcs of uh, uh, lines whatever we have drawn then let me extend this line towards the perpendicular bisector like this now the intersection symbol is going to define what the axis position now to get the axis position this is the circus what we have to do it and once we got it then what we have to do now using your hb pencils name start a, start the namings of the corner as a1 bb1 cc1 dd1 ee1 now let me start the namings a a1 on this corner i am going to mark it as b b1 on this corner i am going to mark it as c c1 on this i am going to mark it as d d1 on this i am going to mark it as e e1 and then finally the axis position i am going to mark it as o o1 now after marking this things so here it is taken as 0 0 uh, it is supposed to be o o1 now let me take it as o o1 okay then uh, let me reconstruct or recreate the point d as well as c so that uh, the next stage is uh, required when uh, the space is required that's why and after which i uh, now make use of a, a scale then try to draw the projector from all the respective corners till it touches the x y line like this now we have drawn the two necessary projectors and the axis position now the axis position has been written here and after writing this one now we know that the front view of the prism whatever may be the type of the prism whether it is pentagon hexagon so cylinder or even square prism whatever it may be always the front view is going to be the rectangle in that fashion we know the height of the rectangle is 60 millimeter then what one can do is from the all respective positions we need to draw that is what all the respective position means we need to draw a length of 60 millimeter like this now starting from this point again we need to draw 60 millimeter that is nothing but we need to measure six boxes again here the axis is supposed to be drawn in the form of a chain line that is long dash short dash and long dash short dash again 90 sorry 60 millimeter line is supposed to be drawn that is you have to measure six boxes over here now complete the top base now complete the bottom base once we have completed the top and bottom base now the required portions has been completed then make sure that using the drawing instruments one has to measure the dimension and the size of the pentagon is 25 millimeter in the same fashion the size of this solid is that is the height of the solid is 60 millimeter okay now i'm going to replace the text to the better visibility areas okay now what we have to do is we have to complete the front view what is the uh, completion of front view using your pencil one has to mark this corner as a one dash followed by we have b one dash and c one dash is going to be the sorry e one dash is behind that is behind the b one dash and then we have o one dash two and then followed by c1 dash as well as d1 dash inside the bracket now this is what the name is what we are going to do it now once the naming is completed in the bottom base the same naming is supposed to be completed at the top base now this is going to be named as a dash then followed by b dash inside the braces e dash and then inside the braces o dash because the axis is not visible in the initial stage front view and then we have c dash as well as d dash this is what the naming source is supposed to be constructed now we know that the boundary is always visible hence for the boundary edges that is a dash to a1 dash and c1 dash c dash a dash is always visible now you can see 
when the object is holded like this this is the longer edge c c1 and this is the longer edge d d1 according to the name is what we have done and this is the longer edge b b1 the longer edge b b1 is going to be the visible longer edge hence for the longer edge b b1 is going to be shown as a dark edge now one can say that the front view is completed in all aspects as per the given requirements and after which we need to proceed further now proceed further means the axis is inclined to hp at an angle of 40 degree now when i am going to rotate this at an angle of 40 degree now how to do that one now let me show you now when it is going to be rotated it is supposed to be rotated in the clockwise direction i will show you the direction this is the clockwise direction now when we are going to rotate in the clockwise direction this is how we are going to rotate it now we can say that c1 d1 is going to be the resting point now using your pencil then what we have to do is using the pencil now let us locate a point anywhere on the sheet that is on the xy line like this keeping some convenient distance then the base has to be inclined that is base inclination is supposed to be 90 minus theta that is the angle of uh, axis inclined to hp is 40 so 90 minus 40 is equal to 50 degree that is the base is supposed to be inclined at an angle of 50 degree now what one has to do is with c1 d1 as a reference we are supposed to draw a line like this at an angle of 50 degree in the anti clockwise direction in the anti clockwise direction sorry clockwise direction not anti clockwise in the anti -clock, uh, clockwise direction okay the moment we are going to draw this line now one can check that the axis sorry the base is inclined at an angle of 50 degree but you are not supposed to show that the base is inclined here because the axis is inclined we have to represent the axis inclination now one can see that using the compass we can measure the distance between these two points using the compass we can measure the distance between these two points now taking the compass and setting that radius that is the radius vision says c1 dash to d1 dash this has a distance now with c1 dash i am going to draw an arc over here the moment when we are going to draw an arc we are going to get the position of a1 dash now let me mark the points to avoid the confusion so this position is going to be a1 dash and here this is going to be c1 dash as well as d1 dash then to get a dash and c dash d dash what is the procedure now we know that the distance between a1 to a is this value now taking the compass and setting the radius value equal to the length of this line then what one has to do is with a1 as the center and then one has to draw an arc like this now similarly with c1 as the center without changing the radius one has to draw a arc like this now when we complete these two arcs then what is the thing we need to get the diagonal length now how do we get the diagonal length now we know that the distance between the a dash to c1 dash whatever the distance we are going to get it that is going to be the diagonal length now diagonal length is going to be measured by using the compass from c1 to a1 now with c1 to a1 again with c1 what we have to take it the diagonal length we have to take it now the diagonal length as a reference we need to draw an arc like this now in the same fashion with a1 as a reference without changing the diagonal length one has to draw a constructional line or the constructional arc over here then using your uh, pencil to avoid the confusion let us make this as a dash properly and this is going to be marked as c dash as well as d dash now we have got the boundary once we got the boundary what we have to do using your hb pencils complete the boundary edges properly complete the boundary edges properly like this okay the moment we complete the boundary edges like this now this completes the boundary the remaining is to get the position of b dash e dash as well as o dash now for which what one has to do is one has to 
take the measurement from a dash to b dash. Now a dash to b dash has to be measured using the compass. That is the distance between these two lines. So is supposed to be taken using the compass. Now using the compass, what we have to do is I'll repeat. Using the compass, what we have to do is with a one as a reference. With a one as a reference, and then draw an arc over here. But make sure that you have to use two edge pencils to draw a line over here. Now, let me draw a one arc, and again, without changing the radius, with a dash as a reference, let me draw one more arc over here. Now, these two lines are supposed to be joined using the so that is these two points is supposed to be joined using the line called as what? Continuous dark line that is nothing but using the HB pencils. Now to get the axis position, now once again we have to measure the distance from A dash to O dash. Now the distance from A dash to O dash we are going to take it using the compass. Now using the compass we are going to set that radius and then we are going to draw an arc using the two H pencils. Now again with A dash as a reference. And taking the same radius without changing the value, then what we have to do? We have to draw one more arc over here, and then we are supposed to draw a chain line format connecting O dash to O one dash. O dash to O one dash is supposed to be connected like this. Now at this end point, it should be connected like this. Okay, now one can say that the required constructions has been completed. Now, to avoid some confusions, let me delete these arcs. Now, you need not to erase it in your books, it will be as it is, no issues. Now, after doing these things, what one has to do is using the scale, using the scale, make it parallel to the axis over here. And after making this line parallel to the axis, one has to draw a line like this. Now, with the parallel line, it has to be extended like this. This line is supposed to be parallel to this line. Now, let me repeat it. It has not generated parallelly. Okay, now it has to be generated parallel to that line and it has to go like this. Now, uh, using your drawing instruments, one can show that this angle is 40 degrees. Now, this is what is required in the question. And after which, using the pencil, one can mention this corner as B1 dash followed by E1 dash. And then we have O1 dash also here. Now let me mark that O1 dash also. O1 dash, which is inside the braces. And then here it is going to be O dash. That is also inside the braces. And then we have B dash and E dash. Now this completes the reconstructing of the front view at an angle of 40 degree to the HP. And after which to get the top view, what one has to do is using a uh, scale and the pencil, one has to start drawing the projectors from all the necessary lines, that is all the necessary corners. Now C dash, D dash is from us. Now we are moving with O dash. Now we are moving with B dash, E dash. And then now we are going to start with K dash. This completes one of the phase. The another phase C dash, C1, D1. And then O1, we are projected now. And after B1, E1 is supposed to be projected. And these lines are supposed to be always vertical. Please make sure that it should be always vertical lines. Now, once we draw the vertical lines, we should draw the horizontal projectors from the previous stage also. Now, these horizontal projectors are also going to be drawn like this. And once we complete the horizontal projectors also, what is the next step? We have to locate the respective points. Now, what is the locating your respective points? We have to mark A1 dash, B1 dash, C1 dash. Now, the projector starting from A1 dash to a1, this is going to be A1, 
So sorry, A1 is not marked properly. Now let me relocate that A1. Okay, A1 dash is here and A1 dash is here. This is the position of A1 dash. And here, this is the position of B1 dash. And on the same line on the horizontal, uh, this is going to be E1. And here, this is going to be D1. And this is going to be C1. And this is going to be O1. Now in the same fashion, now let me mark the A. So the point A is remarked wrongly there, A, B, and this is going to be C, and this is going to be D, and this is going to be E, and this is going to be O. Now once we have marked all the re required necessary points, one second, let me delete this point, which you have marked wrongly. Now, uh, using your pencils, one can make sure that you have to write the annotations. Annotations are nothing but the letters should be written A1 dash, B1 dash, and this is going to be C1 dash, and this is going to be D1 dash, and this is going to be E1 dash, and this is going to be O1 dash. Then this is going to be A. Sorry, here this is not a point, you have to mark it only A, B, C, D, A, B and this is going to be C, and this is going to be B, and this is going to be E. I'm extremely sorry. And here this is going to be O. So whatever the dashes we have written here, it has to be removed. So now let me delete these texts and rewrite that one. Now this is nothing but A1, this is nothing but B1, and this is nothing but C1, and this is nothing but D1, and this is nothing but E1. And finally, this is going to be once we draw the necessary lines, then make use of the scale and the pencil using HB pencils. We have to start with the rules of visibility. What is the first rules of visibility? The first rule says that boundary lines are always visible, which is the boundary lines. Boundary lines are starting from A1 to D1 and to C. So and to C. And then D, then followed by E, then followed by E1, and followed to A1. Now this is what the boundary lines one has to project it. Once the boundary lines has been projected, what is the next step? What we have to do is identify the visible base. When it is rotated in the clockwise direction, you can see the top base is visible. So identify the visible base, make those base edges are visible. Now the base edges which are not on the boundary that is AB and AE are going to be made as visible. Then what is at the fourth, third point? Identify the invisible base, make those base edges as invisible. That is the bottom base is invisible. That is nothing but E1 to D1, E1 to D1, D1 to C1 and C1 to D1 is supposed to be shown as invisible edges like this. Then such of the longer edges which are passing partially or completely passing through the visible base are invisible and vice versa. Now one can see that the longer edges E, E1, D, D1 forms the boundary. However, C, C1 and C1, uh, C is supposed to be shown here. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Now, after doing these things, what is the next step is, uh, identify the visible and invisible bases for us. Now, such of the longer edges. Now, BB1 and DB1, as I told you, it is always visible because it is a boundary. Now, if I'm going to connect CC1, now you can see it is passing partially over the visible base. Hence, this edges must be invisible edges. In the same fashion, if I'm going to consider DD1, DD1 is passing partially over the visible base. Henceforth, it is also supposed to be the invisible edge. Then, however, A A1 is going to pass inside the invisible base, hence it must be visible. Now, A A1, I am going to show it as visible edge. And at last, the chain line has to be represented from O1 to O without fail. Now, once it is finished, one can see that the second stage is completed. Now, what is the third stage? Now, the resting edge is inclined to VP at 30 degree. What is the resting edge? That is C1, D1 is inclined to VP at 30 degree. For which what one has to do is, now what one can do is, 
the line d1 c1 is inclined at 30 degree for which i am going to state you a new procedure here now what is that new procedure draw a line which is parallel to xy line just two boxes below the xy line in your grid shades or if you are using the white shades make sure that at least 20 millimeter dimension is given between these two lines and then keep a protractor here and after keeping a protractor here make sure that you are going to measure 30 degree line over here once we get that make sure that wherever we are going to mark the position of d1 c1 it should not cross the xy line above like this now in such a position we have to locate it now what i am going to do i am going to take this point a little bit slightly away that is whatever this point i have written i am going to start it from here next from here onwards i am going to take the angle 30 degree now what i am going to do i am going to locate the position of d1 here and c1 here how to do that one now let me show you now take your pencil and mark the position of d1 anywhere on the sheet over here like this once we mark the position of d1 now we have to get the position of c1 what is the distance between d1 c1 the distance between d1 c1 is here that is using the compass measure d1 to c1 now taking the compass with d1 as a reference now we know that what is the distance between d1 to c1 using the compass we have measured we have to draw an arc once we draw an arc i am going to mark this point as d1 and i am going to mark this point as c1 once the d1 c1 is projected next we have to get the remaining points what are the remaining points o1 o a1 b1 e1 a b c d e these are the remaining points what we have to project it now to get these points how to do the solution now let me show you now we know that we can measure the distance between c1 to d1 we can measure the distance between c1 to d1 now now what we have to do is with c1 as a reference that is with c1 as a reference now with c1 as a reference what i am going to do i am going to draw an arc like this now make sure that this arc is supposed to be drawn using two hedge pencils now with d1 as a center without changing the radius we have to draw an arc over here like next after drawing the positions of e1 as well as b1 approximately then what to know what we have to do we have to measure the distance between we have to measure the distance between these two points okay these two points distance has to be measured using the compass now what we have to do is, and after measuring this distance as a reference well d1 as the center now we are to draw an arc on this uh, arc now with c1 as the center i'll repeat with c1 as the center without changing the radius we have to draw an arc on this arc also now the intersection points what we are going to get that points are going to be marked at the respective point d1 and this point we are going to mark it as e1 now in the same fashion to get the b1 and a1 we have to measure the distance between b1 to a1 now b1 to a1 we have to measure b1 to a1 we have to measure and after measuring b1 to a1 keeping the compass at b1 we have to draw an arc like this and keeping the r center point at e1 without changing the radius without changing the radius one has to draw an arc over here like this now we can see that we have got the position called as e1 now after which i am going to show you what next step is guys uh, once we got these positions well the next step is to get the position of o1 now to get the position of o1 uh, one has to measure the distance between o1 to c1 the o1 to c1 has to be measured using the compass once we measure that one using the compass we have to set that one as a 
radius. Now taking that one as a radius, with C1 as the center, you are going to draw an arc like this. Now, without changing the radius, with D1 also as the center, we have to draw an arc like this, so that it defines the exact position of O1. Now, I am going to mark this point as O1. Now, once we get the one of the phase, now to get the another phase, now let me show you one of the simple technique. What is that simple technique? We know that the longer edge or the axis, whatever it may be, it is having the equal distances. Now, all these lines are having equal distances. Then, now using that concept, what I am going to do is, I am going to measure the distance between A1 to A. I am going to measure the distance between A1 to A, taking that as a reference. Taking that as a reference, then what we are going to do is, with D1, I am going to draw an arc like this. Then, with respect to C1, without changing the radius, with C1 also, I am going to draw an arc. And with respect to B1 also, without changing the radius, I am going to draw one more arc like this. And with B1 as a reference, then without changing the radius, I am going to draw an arc over here like this. Then with E1 as a reference, repeat, E1 as a reference, without changing the radius, I am going to draw an arc like this. And again, at last, with O1 as a reference, without changing the radius, I am going to draw an arc like this. Okay. Now, once we have drawn these arcs, now we are fed up with how to get the exact positions of A, B, C, D. Now, let me show you how to get the exact positions of now to get the position of A dash, or sorry, position of A, what one has to do is, one has to measure the distance between D1 to A. The distance between D1 to A. Now, taking that compass with D1 as a reference. Now what one can do is, one can draw an arc like this. Now, this intersection, we are going to get the point A. Next, after getting A to get the B, what one can measure in the same fashion, we can measure D1 to B, which is also equal to C1 to E also. Now, this distance is supposed to be measured. Now, this is going to be measured like this, that is, with D1, with D1 as a measurement, I am going to draw an arc over here, and in the same fashion with C1 as a reference, Without changing the radius, I'm going to draw an arc on this line too. Now, we are going to get another two corners, and this corner is going to be marked as B, and this corner is going to be marked as E. Now, to get the position of C and D, don't get the D1 and C1 as a reference now. Now, we can take up a, a reference of any other points like A to C and A to D. Now you can see that A to D distance and A to C distance will be always same. Now let us measure the distance between A to D using the compass. Using the compass, we have to mention A to D measurement. Once we get the A to D measurement, then what we have to do is, well, A as a reference, now let me draw an arc on this. Let me draw an arc on this, a predefined arc, and again, Taking the same radius without changing the value, we have to draw one more arc over here like this. Now you can see we are going to get the required position. That position we call it as uh, C and this position we call it as D. Now we have marked all the 12 points, that is 5 base corners at the top, 5 base corners at the bottom and the 2 axis position O and O1. Now where exactly O1 is there, we are not at uh, uh, completed. Now let me show you how to complete the O1. Now to get the O1, now what we have to do is we can measure the distance between C to O. Now the distance between C to O is supposed to be taken like this. Okay. Now with C, I am going to draw an arc like this. Now that is going to be the position of O. Once we get this all 12 points, then using your pencil and the scale, Whatever the image it is going to look like here, the same image has to be reproduced here. That is, starting from 
e1 e1 to b1 and b1 to b b1 to c and after completing c then d then e then we are going with e1 the sorry uh, e1 and this is going to be the a1 so this point is not e1 this is supposed to be a1 that is a naming mistake sorry guys so this is going to be a1 now once this is completed the remaining parameters whatever is visible and invisible as it is seen in this figure the same thing has to be reproduced now the reproduction of the lines has been done now the longer edges has been done now the remaining is the axis position now let me position the axis also properly yeah now once we have defined these things then what is the next step to get the front view we have to draw the projectors now let me show you how to draw the projectors now let me start drawing the projectors from each and every line very properly now let's see i'm going to draw a projector and from b i'm going to draw a projector and these projectors are very nearer and then from a also i'm going to draw a projector and from o also i'm going to draw a projector and from e i'm going to draw a projector like this the five vertical projectors has been generated now with b1 also i need to generate a projector this is also very nearer then we have to draw the projector of c so here uh, the projectors are very nearer so please be careful while plotting the points now d1 and next we have e1 and then a1 and the last not but the least that is the axis projector now these vertical projectors has been finished now we have to get the horizontal projectors now let me show you how to draw the horizontal projectors now this is one and the xy line is going to act as c1 or d1 horizontal projectors then with a1 we have to draw the horizontal projector like this in the same fashion with c and d also we need to draw the horizontal projector and with o also we need to draw the horizontal projectors and then with b also we need to draw the horizontal projectors and then finally a dash also we need to draw the horizontal projectors now with a lot of patience we have to mark it now let me show you how to mark the c yes now after drawing these projectors we have to mark the points as i told you now uh, we have to locate the points now you should be very very careful enough to locate the points now let me locate the projector of a da a1 dash so here there may be a chances of a1 dash is going to be marked with a dash so please be careful a1 dash marked with a1 dash then after a1 dash this is a horizontal projector of b1 dash and this is the horizontal projector of b1 dash now the b1 dash horizontal projector is here now let me mark the b1 dash projector also okay now after marking the b1 dash along with the b1 dash horizontal projector we have e1 dash now let me mark that e1 dash then c1 dash and d1 dash is on the xy line so that we will project that c1 dash to xy line and then d1 dash is also on the xy line like this then at last the axis position o1 dash has to be represented now in the same fashion now let me locate the position of o1 here that is o and then uh, the position of a has to be marked here so the intersection a and uh, here the intersection is b and here the intersection is e and here the intersection is uh, d and here the intersection is c now using the pencil now start naming the respective corners so now let us start with the a1 dash now this corner is going to be named as a1 dash then followed by b1 dash then c1 dash and this is going to be d1 dash 
and this is going to be u1 dash and this is going to be o1 dash. Now in the same fashion at the top base a dash then this is going to be b dash and this is going to be c dash and this is going to be d dash and this is going to be e dash and finally o dash. Now here one has to have a lots and lots of patience to complete the pentagon even for hexagon you need to have much more patience. Now let us complete the boundary now. What is the boundary? Boundary lines are always visible that is with respect to a dash to b dash is going to be the boundary then b dash to c dash is obviously going to be the boundary then b dash c dash to c1 dash is going to be the boundary and c1 dash to d1 dash then followed by e1 dash is going to be the boundary and then we have to locate that whether it is e dash or a1 dash yes it is e where e dash is the boundary then followed by a dash now it completes the boundary line now we have to identify the visible base as i told you the base which is nearer to the xy line is always invisible the base which is away from the xy line is visible to the observer which is the base away from the xy line that is a1 b1 c1 d1 e1 is the base which is away from the observer hence that base edges is always visible that is a1 uh, e1 to a1 dash then a1 dash to b1 dash and then b1 dash to c1 dash is going to be the visible edge and afterwards the other base is obviously invisible the base edges which are not in the boundary should be considered and we have to complete it as a invisible edge now let me show you how to do the same with c dash to d dash as a reference we have to complete it and then d dash to e dash we have to complete it as a invisible edge now such of the longer edges that is the fourth point either partially or completely passing through the visible base are invisible and vice versa that is nothing but if i'm going to connect the longer edge d1 dash to d dash it is passing through the visible base hence it must be invisible next if i'm going to connect bd1 dash and aa1 dash they are going to pass inside the visible uh, invisible base hence these two lines are going to be represented as visible edges then at last not but the least one has to look at the axis position now the axis is going to be represented like this that is with o1 to o dash properly like this now one can say that the solution is completed in all aspects now if you are having any sort of doubts to solve this problem feel free to ask me but here when we get the pentagonal prism and hexagonal prism the lines are keep on increasing we make sure that the patient's level is very very important to solve the problem now if you all like this video you can press the like button and also please do subscribe to my youtube channel and also keep watching the youtube channel start commenting on the uh, comment list so that you can get the responses and even i can get feel that yes the students are watching the video so that it gives me an encouragement to do more and more videos on the manual drawings as per your request this manual drawings has been started and thank you once again for watching my videos once again i request all the students please do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you i'm signing off myself vijay tagarwal